testing for tin ions. Attention! Hydrochloric acid can cause severe chemical burns on the skin and eyes and cause irritations of the respiratory tract. Tin 2 chloride is toxic if swallowed can cause chemical burns on the skin and eyes and allergic reactions of the skin. Stenane is toxic if inhaled. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the recreation of this experiment. For the test the following is needed. A Bunsen burner, a test tube, a test tube holder and a porcelain dish or a small beaker. The use of potassium permanganate is optional. I had begun dissolving some tin in hydrochloric acid which could take several days. So I decided to use a sample of the dilute solution but a solid sample could also be used instead. The liquid or solid sample is then added to the porcelain dish and some 20% hydrochloric acid is added. Due to my solution being almost pure hydrochloric acid this step was skipped. Next some zinc is added to the solution which causes several reactions to take place. The zinc reacts with the hydrochloric acid to form hydrogen in the nascent state which is way more reactive than molecular hydrogen but reacts mostly to form the latter. A small part of it is able to react with other substances so it can be used as a reducing agent in lots of reactions. In another reaction tin 4 compounds of which some are insoluble in water are reduced to tin 2 compounds by the zinc. The most important reaction is the formation of stenane or tin hydride out of the tin 2 ions and the nascent hydrogen. The additional electrons can be provided by the zinc metal. The test tube is then filled with water and the Bunsen burner is ignited. Next the test tube is first held into the solution and then held into the flame of the Bunsen burner. When the sample contains tin the stenane has formed which then burns on the surface of the test tube with a blue flame. It is only held into the flame temporarily so the water doesn't begin to boil. Due to the blue flame of the Bunsen burner a false result can sometimes be observed. That's why the water in the tube can be colored by the addition of some permanganate to increase the contrast. Nevertheless this is only done if the light in the room cannot be dimmed. In the dark the luminescence can be observed quite well. A wrong result can be obtained by the presence of large amounts of arsenic or traces of niobium. This was testing for tin. I hope you enjoyed. Please rate and comment. If you want to see how to test for chromium compounds you can watch my video about some of its reactions here. Or you can watch my latest video here.